back in your calculus classes, usually usually in second semester class, uh, you spend some time talking about convergence of sequences and convergence of series. And I think a lot of calculus students look and say, why, why on earth are we learning this? Well, hopefully you're, you're starting to get a feel for why. Uh, a lot of the questions that we talked about so far have come down to generating a sequence. And it, it's been important to us to say, you know, does the sequence converge? And if it does, what does it converge to? From a numerical analysis perspective, it, yes, it's important to know that a sequence converges, but we need to go a little deeper and ask how fast is the sequence converging? Because again, from a numerical analysis perspective, we need to know, you know how much computing time is it going to take for us to get the level of accuracy that we need to see in our results. The method we're going to be using to talk about uh, our iterative methods is what's called the order of convergence. I've got the definition here, and I, I know there, there's a lot going on. Uh, I, I suggest you pause the lecture here for a minute, take a look, read through this on your own, right, see if you can kind of parse it out. Uh, then start start it back up, and we'll go over all the individual pieces here, see how they all come together. So first, we're talking about a sequence. And we know that the sequence converges. We have this extra requirement here that no individual term of the sequence is ever actually equal to that point that it's converging to. With, those, with that setup, if there exists positive constants, lambda and alpha, such that this limit exists, then we're going to say that the sequence converges to P of order alpha with asymptotic error constant lambda. And there are two special cases that we're going to, we're going to be focused on. The first is when alpha equals 1 and lambda is less than 1. In that case, we're going to say the sequence is linearly convergent. And when alpha equals 2, we'll say it's quadratically convergent. All right, so let's take a closer look at this limit here and see, and see what's going on with these with the numerator and denominator. Each of these two parts are error terms. The numerator is the error of the n plus first term, right? It's how much the n plus first term differs from the actual uh, convergent point, convergent value. And the denominator is the error of the nth term. So what do we do? What do we see when we look at the ratio? Right, the ratio is, is by taking the limit of the ratio, we're saying that the rate at which the errors are changing, give or take that alpha value, needs to be approaching a constant. So let's look at these two special cases a little more in a little more detail. If alpha equals one then this is the limit as n approaches infinity of absolute value pm plus 1 minus p over the absolute value of pn minus p, and this has to equal a constant. Right Now, if, if that's approaching a constant, then, then as n gets large, this ratio pm plus 1 minus p over pn minus p is going to be approximately lambda. And if we manipulate this a little, get rid of the fraction, p absolute value pn plus 1 minus p is approximately lambda times the absolute value of p sub n minus p. So in other words, what, 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 this, is, what this is saying to us is that the error of the m plus first term is approximately a linear function of the error of the previous term. And if, if we look at the, the, at the quadratic case, uh, then we, we get the limit n approaches infinity, absolute value pn plus 1 minus p over the absolute value pn minus p squared has to equal a constant. Now, uh, squaring the denominator magnifies its value. Right? In, in general, Right, at, at, as n gets large, we expect these errors to get small. So you're squaring a small number, which makes it even smaller. And when you divide by an even smaller decimal number, you expect the ratio to get bigger. So what, what this is saying is, is that the error of the m plus 1 term has to be so much smaller 
then the error of the nth term, that even when we square that nth term, even when we magnify its value that way, the, the limit still ends up being a constant. So I've got a couple of examples for us to look at here to illustrate what the practical difference between these two methods is and why it's going to be so important to us. So I want to start off with this uh, sequence here, a sub n equals 1 over 2 to the n. You can see, uh, pretty, pretty obvious, I think, this approaches 0 as n goes to infinity. So that's going to be our value of p. Right, so now, now let, let's go to our, uh, our order of convergence definition here. And let's start by looking at the case where alpha equals 1. And in that situation, the limit becomes the limit. n approaches infinity, absolute value, pn plus 1, which is 1 over 2 to the n plus 1, minus p, which is 0, over the absolute value of 1 over 2 to the n minus 0. All right, so we, 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 don't, uh, we do the subtraction. The zeros go away. We don't need the absolute value because... 2 to a power is always positive. So this becomes the limit. n approaches infinity. 1 over 2 to the n plus 1 times 2 to the n over 1, which is just a half. And there's our lambda. Right? That's the value of lambda that we were looking for for this value of alpha. And because lambda, the limit exists, and it is less than 1, uh, I, I can say that we are getting linear convergence from this sequence. Now, the question is, can we do better? And well, if we let alpha equal 2, what happens? Well, then we, we essentially get the same thing here, right? The, the limit is going to be set up the same. The only difference is going to be that I'm going to add uh, that exponent in the bottom. So this is 1 over 2 to the n squared. So this becomes the limit. n approaches infinity. 1 over 2 to the n plus 1 times 2 to the 2n over 1, right? And that, that's going to give us a very different result. This is the limit as n goes to infinity. Uh, subtract the exponents. This is 2 to the n minus 1, which is infinity. And that, that limit uh, essentially doesn't exist. Uh, so it, it's certainly not finite, which is what we were looking for. So because we got a finite result when alpha equals one, but not equal to, but not when it was equal to two, this sequence is going to be linearly convergent. All right. So I, I did some experimenting with this. I said, I said, okay, well, look. Um, I at first I calculated uh, these a sub n minus zero values. Right? And those are equal to a sub n, of course. Uh, and I did this out to n equals 11. Then I also calculated that ratio we were looking at. a sub n plus 1 over a sub n. Yeah, you can see this does equal 1 half. It's a constant. All right, so then over here, just to see what's going on uh, with the quadratic case, I did it again, this time doing a sub n squared in the denominator. Yeah, you can see this does uh, very quickly start to diverge. So one thing I, I do want you to notice here before we move on, uh, it took 10 iterations for us to get out to three decimal places of accuracy with this linearly convergent sequence. Right, so hold on to that, right? And let's look at another example. Let's go through the same argument here. And let's see what kind of convergence we can get from this sequence. Again, this clearly approaches zero. And that's going to be our value of p. So if we start with alpha equals 1, then this is the limit as n approaches infinity, 1 over 2 to the 2 to the n minus 0, absolute value, over, oh, excuse me, n plus 1 up there, over 1 over 2 to the 2 to the n minus 0 again. And the same thing's same thing's happening here, right? The, the, we don't need those zeros. Uh, the sequence terms are always positive because we don't need the absolute value. So this is the limit. N approaches infinity. One over two to the two to the n plus one 
times 2 to 2 to the n over 1. And if we subtract the exponents here, this is the limit as n goes to infinity of 2 to 2 to the n minus 2 to the n plus 1, which is the limit n approaches infinity to 2 to the n. I'm going to factor out 2 to the n here. So this is 1 minus 2. So that's the limit n goes to infinity 2 to the negative 2 to the n, and that's going to be 0, which is less than 1. So we, we know that we are at least getting linear convergence, right? But let's see if we can do better. And let's look at alpha equals 2. If we put alpha equals 2 in here, then this becomes the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over 2 to the 2 to the n plus 1 over 1 over 2 to the 2 to the n squared. All right, so let's just keep going, work, work this limit out. This is the limit as n approaches infinity, 1 over 2 to the 2 to the n plus 1 over 1 over 2 to the 2 times 2 to the n. Well, 2 times, well, let, let's flip it over. This is the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over 2 to the 2 to the n plus 1 times 2 to the 2 to the n plus 1 over 1. The exponents there are going to cancel, and this is just 1. So the quadratic version, when we took alpha equals 2, uh, that also approached a constant. And so this tells me that we're actually doing even better and getting quadratic convergence here. Now, you're, you're welcome to try this again, right? Uh, you, you can try this with alpha equals 3, and if you work through the limit, you'll see that that limit does diverge. And right? so the best we can do is alpha equals 2 when quadratic convergence. I've worked through the same uh, analysis here. I, I've looked at the first six terms, right, and calculated uh, a sub n minus p, or which was 0. Then I took the limit, uh, excuse me, I, I took the ratio of the m plus first error and the nth error. And you can see that that is, that is converging, right? It, it does definitely appear to be going to zero, uh, which is good because we did see that we, we met the requirements for linear convergence. But if you, if you look at the next case, we're let the exponent be 2, and yeah, it, we, we get exactly the result that we saw before. That ratio is actually not just approaching 1, it's constant at 1. Uh, and finally, I, I did work out that the cubic case where the exponent is 3, and you can see that, yeah, with, with 3, we, we don't get a limit. Right? That, that does blow up very quickly. Now, what, what I want you to notice here, uh, remember I, I told you to kind of hold in the back of your head uh, that with the linear case, we needed to go out to n equals 10 just to get three decimal places worth of accuracy. Well, if, if you look at what we've got going on here, um, we've made it out to n only to n equals 5. We're already out to 10 digits of accuracy. We're three times better for half the work. So hopefully just with these two quick examples, I've convinced you that quadratic convergence is a highly desirable trait. Uh, this is really uh, kind of the, the gold standard in numerical analysis techniques. If you, if you can come up with something that converges quadratically, then, yeah, you found something really good. So in the next lecture, we're going to circle back to the iterative methods that we, we've been talking about previously uh, and see how we can interpret what's going on with those uh, in terms of how fast they're converging using this order of convergence concept.